So we are going to uh, discuss when we want to uh, do the uh, final test. What is our section? This section is BB, right? So 17 it is. So it's 17, November 22nd. So yeah, we want to, let me just take, take a look at the calendar. So um, Friday will be the 9th. Friday 9th, December 9th, that's, that's two and a half weeks approximately from now. That's going to be your, is it? November, December. Pardon me? December 9th. Probably, yeah. 14th is the last day of the school, right? And uh, 14 uh, will be Wednesday, right? It will be Wednesday. So Tuesday, the class, unless you want, now on paper, you, I don't want to do it on paper. Um, I, I could do the test on paper and do it on Tuesday, but that's awful. Like paper is, is bad. So, uh, and we are done with all the topics and stuff by then, many folds. So I think it's better to do the test on Friday the 9th. So uh, you're done with your OP244, and all you have to do is your, uh, uh, other courses, whatever it remains. <laughs> and uh, so Friday the 9th is going to be the test, final test, okay, final assessment. Um, last assessment or second one, whatever, however, whatever you call it. So we'll set that one up. I'll send an announcement. Uh, let me just send an announcement now so we all know. Uh, Seneca. So courses, section B, and let's bring it over here. Okay, so final assessment will be on Friday, December 9th. Uh, the format will be identical to the midterm. Okay? Please, actually, I'm going to mention that later. Please read the questions before answering. Okay, so the, the format will be identical to the midterm. Like for the one that, and I'm just going to send it. Especially, um, Sometimes I need only design, and I ask you to only do prototype, and people waste developing functions when I just ask for the prototype. Please read the questions before answering. Please read the questions before answering. And your question, my friend, you had a question. Yes. Oh, yeah, everything. Yeah. You don't get all, yeah. You, you cannot get the mark for workshops unless you all, for, sorry, for workshops you will, but for project, project is due on the 9th. Unless you do it earlier than that, then you will get the mark. But at the last day that you can submit your, uh, your project is the 14th. So it's after, the, after your final, after your midterm. But yeah, you get all your marks. Uh, Okay, I'll bring this over here, and let's begin. Before we start, any questions, anything about, I did an overview for, the, for, for Milestone 4. Um, uh, I don't know if I actually posted, did I, did I is it, was it posted? I think it, the, the watch was like it was, in, uh, anyways. Uh, let me, ch I um, doubt it actually, did I post it? <clears throat> if not, I'm going to do it right now.
No, let me just, I just have to add the link. Give me a second. So we're going to add the link. So take a look at that one. If you have any questions, let me know. So the overview is going to be there. For the workshop we did, and I, for some reason I did it for a second time in the other class. So, so I'll do that later. It doesn't matter. Uh, let's, uh, let's start with the uh, templates. So, uh, yeah, templates. Templates are one of the most powerful things you can do in C++ and you can use in C++. Templates are essentially give the algorithm of what needs to be done to the, to, to the compiler and ask the compiler to write the program for you when needed. So you can create the algorithm of what you want and give it to the, compute, to the, to the compiler. If you don't call it, no function will be written for you. So essentially, it writes the code for you if needed. I'll demonstrate. So the, the way that I always talk about this is as, as follows. So uh, Bring it up. So, say I want to um, a very simple function. I want to write a function to uh, add a couple of integers. So I'm going to call it something like int sum, and I'm going to write int a. So int sum, int a, int b, and I'm going to return a plus b. So that's essentially what I what I need to be doing. I, this is what I want to do to find the sum of two, two integers. If I want to find the sum of two doubles, it's the exact same thing. I can just over I can just overload that. I can just overload that to double. Now I find the sum of two doubles, right? And double. Okay. Now, to write a program like this, I know that the sum is written and the algorithm for it is to just to do the add a plus b over there. So if I, if I actually run the program like this, and let's have something else in here. Let's say I have uh, a class called let's say I have a class called mark all right and this mark class of mine also I'm going to bring the utils over here if we need it just a second let me bring utils Um, existing not workshop nine. They changed this thing in 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 the new version of the. When you say add existing item, it brings up the last thing you usually it used to bring. All right, so let's add these two just in case we want them. And then I'm going to <clears throat> add these over here. I don't know why we need that, but let's uh, just do it like this. So now I have the mark. Take a look at mark. So mark is a class over here that has uh, a data in it. 
I'm setting it to something, and it has an operator plus in it. And the result of operator plus is returning another mark, uh, adding the two data and returning out. And it has a display, and it's overloaded to get printed, right? So if I want to add up two marks using the sum command, I can still do it. There is no problem with that. I can actually write over here exactly as I did for the other one. Instead of that double thingy, I can actually write over here something like this. I can write over here mark. And this one is mark. And this one in mark. This helper function for that mark will work too because plus is defined for mark. And mark doesn't have any resources, so copy construction, if it's called for passing value, passing mark by value, it will still work. The exact same thing if I have another thing, for example, say I have something like a class container. Container class is almost the same thing. It's a container. It has data. It sets it. It has a plus. So I can do the exact same thing over here. I can do the exact same thing over here for the container and add, just make this one container. So I hope you notice what I'm, what I'm trying to accomplish over here. I am showing you that to create a new function, I just copy the old function and change the type. Correct? Do you follow how I did it? I'm not, I was not just trying to bore you. I was trying to show you because the algorithms over here are all the same. They all work the same way. All I need to do is to copy the content of the function and change the types. Correct? We can ask the compiler to do that for us. So instead of actually writing something like this, I'm going to just take Let's comment this one. And in here, what I'm going to say will be this. I'm going to say, what am I going to say? I'm going to say, so I want some type to be here. We know that. And it's going to be some, and it's going to be type A and type B, correct? And then I have return A plus B. That's what I'm doing, correct? The problem is that the types over here are not defined. I need to tell to the compiler, C, any sum function that is called, please rewrite this, replacing the type to what is needed. So in my main, when I actually write something like this, so in my main, when I actually write a code like this, where sum is called in many different ways, it will look at x and sees x is a double, therefore change all, changes all the types to a double. In here, it sees i is an integer, creates another function, and changes all the types to an integer. In here, c is a container, it creates a sum, and everything is container. All I need to do is to tell to the compiler, hey, this, the, what you see down here is a template, and the type name is type, which means now the compiler says this is a blueprint of what to create based on what I'm calling. And if that, if you do not call anything, what the devil is a pop in here? Did I have a pop over here too that I missed? Let me see. Where's my mouse? I lost my mouse. Oh, there we go. Container. Oh, yeah, I had to pop too. <laughs> Which I don't need. You got the message. It's the exact same thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove that pop thingy over there. And... So this is going to become, anyways. So by doing something like this, the compiler at the time when it's actually compiling, it says, okay, I have a template. Now let's, let's compile the rest of the thing. As soon as it says the same name is called, it takes a look to see if the signature matches the signature of this one, the pattern of the signature. Because the pattern matches, it gets the type of this one and creates a 
a template out of it. So that template becomes a blueprint for every single time uh, for the for the for the uh, function to get created, and the compiler creates that for you. Which means when you actually run the program. You get 55,000 errors. What did I do? Uh, do I have a sum somewhere that it says? Oh. There you go. Now when you run the program, you will see when you run the program, you will see it's creating all these things. But when the sum is called, it goes to the exact same pattern, but this time an integer the type over here will be actually a double. So it actually runs that with a double and then it comes over here for an integer. And now take a look. When I come over here, m is uh mark so when i come up to the same template running this a plus b actually calls the plus of mark because type is now a mark every single time uh, a new of uh, a new function call is made it's going to actually build a function for you and remember the function that the functions that are created if you do not call any functions with the name sum, no code will be generated, which means in your binary, there's not going to be a sum function anymore. Sum function in your binary exists only if you call it. This is the extreme type of polymorphism. The function doesn't even exist, and it creates it out of thin air based on your demand. How you call the function, that's how the function is generated and created. Are we okay with this? That was a very simple example for it. We're going to go with uh, better stuff. Okay? So, obviously, if you wanted to, you could actually pass the, uh, uh, the like, the, create your template as a, uh, as uh, a reference. So what uh, what I could have done, let me just put over here template. What I could have done over here was to create the template. So let's remove these things because we don't want to we don't want to pass anything by by value. I could have said over here const type reference. There is no problem with that. Const type reference. This would still work if the things are designed properly. There is one thing with templates that, let me just make it bigger so we can see in this light thingy that we have in here. So there is one thing that you need to know about templates is that every template must be accompanied by a document. The templates are not short like this. Usually the templates are humongously big applications with many things in them. Now, when you look at this, let's, let's look at the previous one. The template that we had before, it was, let me just remove this. So this is what we had before. For this template to work, looking at this function, for this template to work, what features should the type support? for this template to work. The type is passed by value, correct? So anytime the type is called, it's going to make a copy of whatever type it is. So your class must support copy construction. No question. So that should be in the documentation of your template, that the type in this template requires a rule of three, should support rule of three. So they know. And then in here, you're saying A plus B. So the binary operator plus must have a meaning for the two types. For example, if, say, in here, my mark 
if the mark over here does not support the plus operator, then it will not work. If I actually try and run this, compile and run this program, what I'm going to get will be this error message. Binary plus type does not define this operator, yada, yada, yada. So it means you are trying to call the mark with sum, but when sum is calling and says mark plus another mark, that doesn't have a meaning for it. So that has to be documented. So a person who wants to use this sum function of yours with a class, know that the class must support the plus operator, binary plus operator. So with your, uh, with your um, function template or any type of template that you create, you must have a, uh, uh, a documentation, something like that. And in all the final tests, this was one of the questions. Write a function template that does this, and I'm going to tell you how to do it, how, to, how, it's, how can you easily create a template, and then specify what are the requirements of the type. So half of the mark is the fact that you understand because type is returned by value, it means copy construction is needed. So in here, rule of three is not actually needed when you think about it. In here, what you need to have is for the type to be able to be passed by that. So copy construction is the only thing. So this object should be copyable. Rule of three was a little overkill. I didn't have any assignment over here. So that, doesn't, that didn't make sense. So keep that in mind. And so this is the... Uh, this is the uh, specifications that this one needs. But if I actually change these ones to constants, so if I actually say constant type reference A, constant type reference B, so the need for, uh, the need for uh, copy construction is eliminated from the arguments. But because the type is still returned by value, still you need copy construction for this. Okay. So these are the things that we need to know, extremely important. But of course, this is just now uh, kind of more efficient. OK? Any questions down to here? All right. So how do we do templates? How do we actually? Uh, design templates and how it works and all the good stuff. The very first thing that you need to understand about templates and modules, there is a big problem with templates. As I mentioned to you, no matter what you do with your template, that template is a blueprint to create something out of it. So, say I have, uh, wait, say, I'm trying to get something that, can, Give you an example. Really? Did I miss anything in here? Okay. Just a second. So let's say we are writing something like this. 
So let's put this one in here. I'm going to say template e template with references. Let's say I have, uh, let me just put all these things away. If I need them, I'm going to bring them later. I'm just going to remove it for now. Let's say I have an array of integers over here. So this is how we write templates, how we create templates, template function templates. Let's say I have an array of integers, integer a, and um, in, in this a I have, I don't know, some values. How many are they? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 of them. So I have 13 integers in here. If I want to sort these values, what do I do? We know the sort algorithm for it. So what I will do, I'm going to write over here a sort function. So I'm going to say void sort. And you get an array over here. It's an integer array that you're getting. So integer uh, pointer array. And then you get a size, integer size. Uh, you can get direction to two to see if you if it if you want to have uh, uh, what should we call it ascending or descending. Well, we'll do that later. It doesn't matter for now. So I'm just going to do it as is. So in here I'm going to say integer i and j, and for i set to zero, i less than uh, size minus one, and i plus plus. Then I'm going to write 4, j set to 0, and j less than size minus uh, i minus 1, j plus plus. Then in here I'm going to say if array, uh, uh, if uh, array j is uh, less than array j plus 1. Then in here, I'm going to swap the two. So for swapping, uh, I'm going to write another function over here. So I'm going to write void a swap integer pointer a, integer pointer b. And in here, I'm going to say int temp is target of a. And target of a is set to target of b. And target of B is set to temp. And in here, I'm going to say swap array, address of array J. And address of array J plus 1. That's standard bubble sort, OK? So now, if I want to sort these, I can actually say sort a13, OK? And now I can print the array. So I'm going to say void prn array. It, this is going to be a constant integer pointer array because uh, I want to just print them, an integer size. Now in here, I'm going to say 4. Integer i set to 0, i less than size, and i plus plus. <clears throat> uh, then I'm going to say if i, uh, I'm going to say c out comma, or comma with a space. Then I'm going to say c out uh, array i, and then go to new line. OK, so let's look at what we have created over here. Uh, and in here, I'm going to say print array, prn array, prn array, a. OK, very simple, straightforward thing. What did I do? I created an array, I sorted, I printed, and that's it. How do I sort it? Standard bubble sort. How do I print it? I, uh, and in, in standard bubble sort, I compare the neighboring 
elements of the array, if they are not the way they are supposed to be, or they're supposed to be, I just swap them and I make them to be the way I want it. And therefore, it's going to get sorted. And print array over here starts from zero up to size. And for the first one, it doesn't print comma. Uh, but for the rest of them, it's going to print comma. So it's going to be comma separated and puts it out. And hopefully, it's going to work. And uh, I need to copy. I edited the wrong thing, <laughs> as usual. PRG.CP, that's the one that I want to do. So that's, that's my array. And uh, let's run it and see if it works. Oh, we have build errors. Two fewer parameters to call print array. So I oh, forgot to mention 13 over here. And there you go. So it's sorted in descending order, and we're done. OK, are we OK with this? Any problem down to here? Now, what if I want to sort an array of doubles? Should I write another one? No, I can just convert this to a template so it can be rewritten for me so I don't have to rewrite the whole thing over and over. How do I do that? We start with all the functions that are related to what we are doing, and every individual one must become a template. So swap is a template of its own, sort is a template of its own, PR and array is a template of its own. Three templates I have to create for all the whole thing to work. And each template's power is right for the scope that is coming in front of it. So let's start for the first one. I just write template, type name, T. You can write anything. You can write over here, hoo-hoo, if, if you want to. It's crazy. You don't do that. But T is fine, OK? Then you have to change all the types that you would have changed if you changed the swap to a double to T. So if I wanted this swap to swap doubles, it should be double pointer A, double pointer B, and double temp is equal to whatever, correct? So what do I need to do? I just remove those things and put a T instead. T, T, and T. Immediately, I can run it to see if it works for that integer thingy. Because over here, it's going to actually call the value, right? So if it works, it's fine. We'll see if it's going to work or not. So I'm just going to run the program, see if it's going to compile and run and, and do all the things. I see, yes, it works. So the first template is successful. OK, next. Let's do the next one. Then I'm going to do the sort. I'm going to come over here, write template, type name, T. Now, if I wanted this to be sorted as a double array, what would have I changed? Definitely, this is going to be a double pointer array, correct? Do I change this integer to a double? No, it's size of the array. It has nothing to do with what I want to change. So I'm going to let it be. The index, do I need to change? No. Everything else? No. So the only thing that needs to be changed is that one. So in here, I'm going to change that one to a T. Compile and run it, see if it works. Yes, it did. Voila. OK. And then I'm going to go to the next, that last one that is printing an array. Now in here, I'm going to say template, type name, T. Now what do I need to change over here? OK, I'm printing an integer, so this Definitely, if it was double, that has to change to a T. Do I need to change the size? No. Do I need to change the index of the array? No. I don't need to. Why does it give me an error? Because I misspelled template. Then I compile and run it to see if it runs. Perfect. It runs. So now I can test it with a double. What do I do? I create another one. I'm going to say over here, double D. And I'm going to put over here, say, 10. And I'm going to set it to 1.1, 3.3, So difficult to write random stuff. <laughs> what? What happened? Oh, okay. Somebody's Google answered? Okay. 
One, two, three, four, four. Oh, it was my recording? <laughs> okay, four, four, four. 2.2, 1 1.1, is it 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I need two more. 3.34 and 50, whatever. I hope it's that's 8, we'll find out, we'll see why. It's 10, we'll find out. So now in here, what I can do, I can actually say sort D and 10. And I can say PRN array D and 10. Okay? Now run the program, see if it works. And ta da! So templates are amazing. You don't have to rewrite your code. If your code can be converted to template properly, you're on the go. But immediately after doing this now i'm going to ask you guys one by one you have to tell me what this template requires what does this template require swap what should be active in this template what needs to be done what should it support Aha, you're laughing, you have to tell me. <laughs> so when I say T temp is equal to another temp, another type, what, 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 is, what is assignment at the moment of creation? Constructor, okay? Assignment at the moment of creation is constructor, right? What is it receiving? No, it's not a pointer. It's target, it's not a pointer. Target of A is not a pointer. It's receiving a T, right? So I'm creating a type using the exact same object. What type of a constructor is that? Copy constructor. <laughs> copy constructor. So the first thing is copy constructor. Now for the second one, what do I need here? No, not copy constructor. Copy assignment. So copy constructor and copy assignment must be implemented for the type T. So what are the requirements of the type over here? Copy assignment, copy constructor, and assignment. What is this one? What do I need over here? Should I bribe you with some mark for the final test? What T needs to be able to do in here? Not at all. It's passed by, it's passed by address. It doesn't need copy constructor. <laughs> but so you tell me. Huh? So tell me uh, can anybody tell me which which one of these things are of the type T? Is IT? No. Is JT? No. Is size T? No. Is array JT? Yes. So what is involved with array J? Hmm? No. Could you? This one? You're saying passing by value. What is this? You're passing by address. Thank you. 2% final test, final assessment. Okay? So the less than operator should work with T. T must support operator less than. That's all. Nothing else. There's nothing else over there to go through. Okay? All right. T must tell me. <laughs> no. 
T must support what? Yes, another 2% for assessment. Okay. There we go. So C out. So extraction operator operator ice O stream O stream T must work. Must have this one. Must support. Ah, what did I do? Support. Or you can make it easy. Don't don't put yourself on spot by writing something. It must support uh, insertion into O stream. Easier. Because there could be many different signatures. Could be by what reference, without reference, constant. I don't want to go there. As long as it works, it works. And after that, we're done. So what if I have an array? What is this? I don't want this. No, close. What if I have, what if I have just bringing something, there we go, this is beautiful. What if I have The class name. Class name of mine. Is written as follows. So it has uh, a default constructor. It has a copy constructor. If a copy assignment, it has a destructor. It has a plus operator that adds two names. It concatenates. It has a display and O stream. So. Having said that, if I have an array of names, where are the names? An array of names. If I have an array of names, copy. Can I sort the names with, sort with, with these and print it? Is it possible? Can I actually write over here sort n? How many do I have? Eight. Oh, I actually mentioned eight over there. Good boy. Okay, so eight. All right. And I go PRN array N. Eight. So let's see what are the things that I want to do. So in here. Copy constructor and copy assignment. Do I have copy constructor and assignment? Yes, I do. So swapping will work. Okay, no problem. Must support operator less than. Do I have operator less than? No, so let's make it. If I didn't have, I could have uh, written a helper for it. If I didn't have access for main, I could have written a helper function for it. But because I have access to source of main, I'll do it. Uh, it's not very difficult to create a, uh, a less than operator. So for less than operator, what I need to do is to use a, a st str compare. So what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to say boolean operator less than that receives const name uh, reference right operator. I should kill my cell phone because it's going to. It's just about to ring. I feel like <laughs> it's like a calm before the. Okay. Anyway, so. So, so I have the, 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 the operator created, and in here I'm going to say return. Uh, I think I have the utility ut dot, uh, sdr compare between uh, the value of mine and the value of a right-hand operator being less than zero, right? There you go. Now the less than operator is... Uh, is satisfied. Now let's look at the other one. T must support that. T must support insertion into O stream. We do have that one. Therefore, now I can even sort names. 
So I can just run it, and three years later, four years later, I'm going to have the names sorted in descending order. You see, that's how beautiful templates are. You, it was much easier to add one feature to name than rewriting the whole thing to be able to sort names. So it made my life much easier. That's what templates are. But templates come with one catch. Because the compiler needs the whole thing. You see that? Compiler needs the whole thing to be able to. If, you, if the compiler only has the prototype of the template, can it guess what the logic is to rewrite it? No. Correct? So remember how compiler worked? Do you remember how compiler worked? We talked about it in, I think, IPC and all those good stuff long time ago in the galaxy far, far away. Um, this is how compiler works. If you recall, remember this thing? I, I think I, display, I showed it to you, right? Anybody remembers this? Anyone? Remember this? No? You do? No, you don't? You don't remember? Good. So it means maybe I didn't do it. This is how compiler works. Okay, so let's say you have four files and you want to compile it. So what you do, you write G++, A.CPP, B.CPP, C.CPP, Main.CPP, and you hit enter. And you're saying, I'm compiling my project. What happens is that essentially compiler runs five times for a four-file thing to run. First, it copies the first module unaware of its existence of any other module. So the first module, a.cpp, will get compiled. The result is object.cpp, a.object is going to be saved, or a.o, depending on what the operating system is. Then it runs the second one. In the second one, it just compiles module b.c, unaware of existence of a, c, or, or the other one, right? creates b.object. Now take a look at third one. The third one is the one that is troublesome with templates. It's compiling the module C. When the module C is compiled, ladies and gentlemen, this is your module. Your module is this. Why? Because C.CPP is including B.H. Because B.H is included over there, because C.CPP somehow is using the header file. And they did a bad thing. They actually put it in a header file. They were supposed to, but anyway. Doesn't matter. In any way, B.H is included in c.h and c.cpp. Therefore, when it compiles, the header file and everything is being compiled. But b.cpp is not within that compilation. Because when you include it, it only includes the header file. This is not included. And the object is created. When it comes to main, it's even worse. All the other things are, all the other ones are are included. So the module that is being compiled over there, the module that is being compiled over there will be, will be, will be this one. So this is the module that is getting compiled. Right? It's including everything. Why it doesn't need A, B, or C? Because these are just promises made to main. You are telling to main, the function exists somewhere. Don't worry. Just create the object file for it. And in the fifth one, that is a program called linker. When the linker is called, it puts all the object files together, make sure the promises you made are actually kept. That's why you can compile one module with success, but when you compile your whole project, it says the function didn't found. I didn't find the function. Because you include it in a header file, 
So it looks at it. You said there is a function called PRN array. It says, OK, no problem. I will compile the function call. But when it comes to linker, linker says, you made the call. Show me where the, where is the function. It's not in here, not in here, not in here. Therefore, linker error. OK? That's the reason. So you can compile, but it won't link. This is, this is kind of, um, I'm shocked that I did not mention about, talk about it at the beginning of the semester, but usually I do this, used to do this IPC 144. But what I'm saying over here is that because of this fact, you cannot have a module, normal module with your templates. You cannot put the body of your templates in the CPP file and the prototypes in the header file. Because when the compiler is compiling, it doesn't see that with CPP files. Therefore, it doesn't know what the body of the function, functions are to generate the functions for it. Because of that, a template module, question for final test. OK? I have a template called sort. Name the files for this module. A module for a template does not have CPP file. Everything must reside inside the header file, the body and everything. A template holds, entirely goes into a header file, not in any CPP file. It doesn't make sense because it cannot, it cannot generate the, the functions. Although the compilation, it looks like there is, it is okay and you actually, are, it, it compiles, but when you, want, when you want to actually build it, the compiler says, I don't know how to build the function. It's not there. Because it's not the linker that is building the, the functions from your template. It's the compiler. And the compiler is that one, two, three, four. You see these four ar arrows over here? These four arrows are four times the compiler is called. And after everything is done without error, the program linker is called to put them together. All these things is that G++ enter. When you do that, all these things are called together as a package. And that becomes your compiler. OK? So because of this fact, you need to. You need to remember that you could never, ever have a CPP file for your templates. They must all reside inside a header file. So therefore, if I wanted this array management thingy of mine, this print array thingy that I have over here to be, to put it in a module, and I would say sort. Let's call this one sort, OK? So I have a, a sorting. I'm going to call this one sorting. If I want to create a header file over here called sorting, I'm going to say new item, and I'm going to make it a header file, and I'm going to call it sorting. Dot H. And we put all the things that we want. What do we want? Uh, forget about this. You know, say compilation safeguards. We're going to put all the, let me put it. <laughs> so I'm going to say, if not defined, uh, SDDS sorting and namespace SDDS. Now I'm going to go over here, and if I want the sorting tools to go there, I am going to get everything, body, shmadi, everything, and put it right in there. Okay? And remember, all the comments that I put separately goes at the top of the header file. So at the top of the header file, I'm going to have this. I'm going to have this. And I'm going to have this. So we know the sorting module needs copy constructor. Copy assignment must support less than operator and must support insertion into O stream. And now you have it. OK? And that becomes your module for the header file. And <laughs> we, uh, we have it. OK? So now in here, I can actually say include sorting. And everything works perfectly. So it's modularized now, OK? 
Are we okay with this? Are we okay? With, yes. I just mentioned that when you are compiling, it only sees the header file. Okay, I have a question. Then when wait. 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 Can you tell me how this sort works? Is it binary sort? Is it bubble sort? Is it quick sort? So does the compiler. Because it only compiles the header file. It doesn't compile the CPP file. The four instances of the compiler that are running over here are separate executions that they have nothing to do with each other. So when you actually Why it doesn't zoom? There you go. So when I say this is called, it only have these in scope. It doesn't see this or this or this. Compiles and finishes the compilation once. The compiler runs and execution ends. Then compiler runs and execution ends. And then as, as if you write G++, a.cpp, enter. G++, B.cpp, enter. C++, G++, CPP, enter. G++ main, enter. Link, enter. It's like you issued five commands, and each command has no idea what happened in the other one. The only thing they rely to are the files that exist on the hard disk. Because of that, you cannot have only header, only the prototype inside the header file, because it needs the body to write the code for it. Didn't didn't sit, it does it. <laughs> it's like you're asking your dad, why don't you give me your car? It's just because I don't want to. Because they didn't design it that way. Oh. Okay. <laughs> what Linker is not a guy that you're saying, why you're not doing that? You're a bad person, do it now. It's this its job is to link, not to compile. Okay. okay? <laughs> <laughs> so why doesn't Linker do it? I don't know. It's lazy. It wants to have some beer at night. Doesn't want to do. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but compiler executes fi executes five things. Four of them are a compiler. One of them is Linker. Linker. Oh. So five execution happens. Okay. Four of them compiler. One Linker. Okay, gotcha. It's always like that. Okay, one link creates the execution, the rest are compilers. Okay? Satisfied? Okay. Uh, <laughs> truthful? Really? Or you just want to make me happy? <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay, so that's that. So this is the... Yeah, so, so that's that. Um, let, let's make sure it runs. Oh, build errors. Why? See out on the file. Oh, <laughs> I forgot we are doing see out in here. So I have, oh, so I have to change everything in here now. Because it's a header file, now I have to actually write over here include IO stream. And now because it's IO stream, the see out cannot be see out. It has to be STD see out. I think it's better now, right? Because I cannot say using namespace, yada, 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 right? Now save. Uh, I don't need. This is my. Did I just wipe out? Where is my IO stream? Oh, here's, here it is. So I don't need IO stream here at all. Or STD. Or STD. Oh, actually, I need, I need, I need, I need. Sorry, sorry. I forgot that I have this freaking name over here. <laughs> that has Austria, I forgot. Yeah, but anyway, so, so that's it. So let's run it one more time. Seriously, give me a break. What did I do wrong now? And, and L, oh, do I have an NL here? STD. 
There you go. Now it's okay. All right. So that's that. Now, we can write cool templates. In th let, me just, let me just save this as, uh, I'm going to say, so C sorting main.cpp. Let's say I want to write a function called larger. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna write over here something like int or max of. Okay, max of int a and int b. And what I'm returning over here, I'm returning a being greater than b. I'm gonna return a. Otherwise, I'm gonna return b. Are we good? Okay, we know how to make it a template. Two seconds, right? So, obviously, you can make this constant, smiggly dinghy, or whatever. I don't want to go through that thing, so you can, we can do whatever we want, but I'm not going to go through that. In here, I'm going to say template, type name T, and in here, I can say T, T, and T. Okay? And if I do that, I would have no problem, I will have no problem having something like in, uh, double A and double A being set to, and if it's double, it would be better, okay? And so, <laughs> double B and two, three, four, five, six, okay? And then in here I can say C out max of A and B. And obviously when I run this beautiful program of mine three years later, I'm going to have the max of two printed. Are we good? Okay with this. What if I have this? Character N Fred J. Can I go see out max of so wait, wait a minute. A B C D E F G H I G H A B C D E F G H I J. Anyways. Um, so M N. Would it print the bigger string over here? So bigger one is J, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, right? Will it actually print that one? So what happens when this max of is called? When max of M and N is called, what is J? It's a constant character pointer, right? So it's gonna, this is going to change to constant character pointer max of, constant character pointer A, constant character pointer B. Then it's going to say, is the address of A bigger than address of B? Then it's going to print the one that has bigger address. Now, we could be lucky and the address of J in memory would be bigger than F and it would be printed that way, but it has nothing to do with these two things alphabetically being correct. <laughs> so, what we can do is pause. If the case that you have doesn't match and it's, and because the whole point for the templates is that because the logic is identical, you write the logic and you ask the compiler to do it for you. Now, all of the logics are the same. One or two is different. So it's worth it to explain to the compiler if there is a constant character pointer come in, coming in, don't do this. Do this one instead. Okay? This is called specialization in templates. So in here, you can say, you can actually create a template. So you can say template, okay, like that. So you can put a template like that. Then 
enforce your template signature to the name of the function. So you say constant character pointer max of then you put over here again constant character pointer so you're telling to the compiler if it was back constant character pointer do this a const character pointer b and if that's the case now return uh, uh, ut dot str compare uh, compare between a and b greater than zero question mark then you send a otherwise you send b you see what happened so you say in case they wanted to do that call this one so for everything else that is called but if the max of is called with a constant character pointer this special one is called for it therefore instead of comparing like that it actually string compares between the two okay but no worries if you don't remember the specialization do not worry about it you can simply you can simply overload the function we can overload functions in c++ right always overloads supersede templates so if you have an overload that matches compiler says the heck with the template I have the real thing I'm gonna call that this is specialization op345 but if you do not want to make the specialization just overload the function for the exception and the overload will be picked up the only downfall for it is that if you do not call maxoff with constant character pointer that still will be in your source code the function binary will be still in your source code it will not be ignored the function you wrote it it's going to be translated into binary but if you make it as a specialization then it won't okay so your source code will become small so that's uh, specialization are we okay hopefully okay so at any moment if you have certain type that doesn't match what you wanted to do you can simply overload it and that overload uh, kind of overrides the, the the template that you create and this would work perfectly now it will actually call the other one and it will tell you that J is actually uh, the one that is last are we okay with this okay now to bake your noodles perfectly I'm gonna actually do something else in here so so uh, I think long time ago in a galaxy far far away we actually created uh, a dynamic array once in class remember that we created the dynamic array did we we did I think call it dyn array I think dyn array Yes, 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 yes. Let me just see if I can find it. I'm going to call it dynamic array and see if it's going to give me something. Come on, come on. Search. All in one? You actually remember this? Oh my God. Okay. I know. 14 of October. Yeah. We don't have October here. It's January, February. Oh, no, oh, sorry. Sorry. Wait, 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 wait. I'm in the wrong place. That's why I didn't find it. Wait, 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 wait. 14 of October, you said? <laughs> if that's the case, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bow to you. 14. Darn, yeah. Okay, so I had... Uh, an integer array let me see if this is the dynamic one <laughs> what can I say okay so so we had an integer I just want to show you that classes can be templates too 
we created an integer array class that could be changed to a dynamic array that is template for any type that you want. It doesn't have to be only for integers. So classes can be templates too. That's purely three, four, five. But you know, I'm going to tell you how it is. If go through the notes, you'll see that class templates are explained. I'm going to tell you it's not a big deal. Just take a look at it and see what it is. So, so in here, right off the bat, I'm going to add new item. I'm going to call it uh, dynamic array dot h. Okay, so we call it dynamic array, and I'm going to copy the the code for the integer array that we had and put it in here. I hope it works. Um, I don't remember, like, uh, I don't know if I tested it in class or something, but hopefully it works. So I'm just going to put everything right in here and uh, I'm going to remove that includes yada because everything's in here anyway. Oh, and we don't namespace SDS, we already have one. So I brought the header file, the class definition, and the function definitions and everything in here inside. OK, the only thing with, so first we're going to convert it to a template. OK, first we're going to convert it to a template. I'm going to tell you what it is. We have 20 minutes. Just humor me and listen to me, OK? If you learn it, good. If you don't learn it, wait for 3, 4, 5, OK? So it's a good thing to know. Otherwise, I should sort of say, let's go. This is done the uh, end of the day. We don't want to do that, OK? So there are, with, in function templates, when you converted a function to a template, I said any type that you think you would have changed if you wanted to change this function, change that to a template. In here, it's the same, but there are a couple of more rules that you have to follow. So. First, change all the related, all the uh, types of interest to T. When I say T is type, okay? To template type, to template type, okay? That's number one. Number two, you change, you add the signature you add the template type signature to all the class names names except the name of the class right after the template the name of the class the name the, the name of uh, 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 the name of the class definition, which means the very first one. That you don't change, OK? The names of the constructors, the name of the destructor. Other than that, you change. So let's do it over here, you see. And for each scope, you have to add a template. So scope begins over here, ends over here. That needs a template at the top. So I'm going to write, first of all, let's change that integer array over here. I'm going to say Control H. And I'm going to change integer array to dynamic array. Replace match whole word, case, and voila. OK, that's that. And this one has to change to dynamic two. Save and let's do it. So now in here at the top, I'm going to write template type name. I'm going to put T. Type is too hard. T is OK. And if I don't know why I can't type template. <laughs> okay. All right. So I have the name of the class. Do I add? No. It's the name of the class definition. We don't change it. In here, integer pointer m data. M integer pointer over here is the one that I want to change. 
I want to make it double pointer. I want to make it mark pointer, name pointer, car pointer. So that will change to T. Do I need to change the size? No, size of the array has nothing to do with what element you have. Also, because we don't know what do we have, it's always better to you. What the? I hate this automatic things of Visual C. Just does stuff that, OK? It's better to always use universal type of uh, nullifying things. So it, it's, it's better always to do that. Anyways, so that's that. This is constructor name. We don't change it. This is constructor name. We don't ch change it. This is not. This is an argument. It's not the constructor name. It's the class name. You add the T to it. This is a return type. You add the T to it. This is an argument. You add the T to it. Again, same thing. Add the T. Constant int array. So you want to convert a regular array to this dynamic array of yours. So this int is supposed to change. So that's a constant T array. You are setting it to a regular, setting it, setting the dynamic array to a regular array. If that's the case, then in here, I don't know even how I did that. Does this work? Hmm. Doesn't make sense to me. It looks like it's not supposed to. We'll see. Oh, with the size of the array, it goes. Okay, that's fine. Anyway, so in here, it's going to be T, but unsigned, it shouldn't change. So in here, you, you follow what I'm doing, right? So any name of the class will receive the signature of the template other than constructors, destructor, and the name that comes right after. This is the destructor. I won't touch it. OK? It's, gonna, it's not going to change. Resize, nothing there to change. Size, nothing there to change. Operator bool, nothing there to change. Operator index, of course. It's returning the, the element, so that should be T. And this one is a constant reference. That should be T. But the index remains integer because index is index. Doesn't make any difference. So our class is now a template. But then we have to continue. Type name. Oh, template. Type name, T. The first one is what it belongs to. It's not uh, so it gets. It's just uh, the owner. In here, this is a constructor name. I won't touch it. If size is greater than that, M data is new int. This is the type that I'm creating. So that's going to be T. Template, type name, T. The first one is the owner. The second one is the constructor. I don't touch it. The other one is an argument. I will set it. So that's going to be T. Size, I don't care. M data is equal to new int. That's going to be T. Loop has nothing to do with anything. Just I have to remember that assignment should work for this. So as you are going through it, it's a good idea to have some kind of a notepad open at the side and say, oh, I see something interesting. A T is assigned to another T. So the, t the element, the type of this template needs to have copy assignment. So be aware. Anyways, copy assignment. And in here, it needs a default constructor. OK? And you continue. So template type name T. This one is not the name of the constructor. This is not the name of the constructor. And this is not the name of the constructor. So they all will all work. Delete new int. That is supposed to be. So delete has nothing. This one has nothing. Line 48, int should change to T. All I need to do over here to understand over here is that 
M data needs copy assignment. Okay? Anybody volunteers to try to change this? To see if we can do it. Anyone? <laughs> no? <laughs> so, this one needs a signature because it's not a constructor. This one needs a signature because it's not a constructor. This one is, is an int array, so it has to be a T array. And the rest has nothing to do with anything. And now I had, what, for some reason, I cannot type template. I don't know what's going on. How many more? Anyways, I'll go through it. You get bored, but I'm hoping that if I mention it 50 times, it's going to sit somewhere. Anyways, it's name of the class gets the signature. Name of the class gets the signature. It creates, it wants to build a, from an array. That's going to be the type. Everything else remains the same. Uh, yeah, there's nothing else to go through. Yep. The destructor template. This is the owner gets T, but here there's a destructor. It doesn't get anything. I won't touch it. That's the exception. The owner gets T. Integer temp becomes T temp. New T. Did we miss something like that up there? No, it was M data. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> In here we have nothing, 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 nothing. Everything else is good. This is the owner. T. Nothing else is needed. This is the owner. T. Nothing else is needed. This is the type that is returning, so it has to be T. This is the owner, needs T. The rest, we don't need anything. And same thing as the other one. It returns T. And this is the owner. I think we're almost done. Done. So now I have a template that works for anything that follows, that you, that, that follows a rule of three. So you have to make sure that the element rule follows the rule of three. And this dynamic array is now can be used to work with any array that you want. Go through it again. Again, as I mentioned, I, students will still ask, like, how, what can I do to improve so I can do good in a test and stuff like that? I always say, see my examples, read and study it, and set it aside. Try to do it yourself. Then after you have done without looking at mine, compare. Oh, I made a mistake. Or try to run it. I made a mistake. Set it aside. Look at mine without look at yours. Look at mine. Try to understand it. Then look at yours. Try to see when you can pinpoint it. Do that a few times. And if you could not make it work, then put it side by side at the end. Like that, that's the best. You do this a few times, you're going to master the whole thing. That's the way. Okay? Questions? Don't push it. <laughs> the fact that I told you a template, function template, we're good. But like if you, like remember that now if I if I want like let's say I want a, a, a dynamic array to be printable with C out. If if you do that, then you have to make that one template too. So any function or anything you want to work with this, yes. But the answer to your thing is yes. It's the same thing. Just <clears throat> Do an inheritance, make the first one template, then follow the exact same rules for the other. You're gonna. You can create. You can cre you can inherit from a specific type of template. So I can inherit. Uh, a, what do I inherit from an array? Let's say a priority array. Where when you actually add something, it automatically makes it sorted. Let's say we have an array like that. So where, when you add a value to it, it goes, finds out where it, where it is, and inserts it over there instead of adding it to the end. Okay? If, so let's say priority array is an array 
that is prior to ours, right? So if you want to do that only for an integer, you can actually inherit this, inherit that from an integer template. Then that becomes only for integer. Or you can inherit it from the templated one and do the template as a whole, and then you're going to have a template, uh, inherited template. It, the, the concept is the same, uh, but uh, it's purely 345. Now, what I wanted to tell you was that uh, remember there was an ad for iPhone? Like they would say, uh, you want to do this? There's an app for it. It was like they would say, like, you want to do this? There's an app for it. There's an app for that. Anything that you would say, there's an app for that. I want to do accounting, there's an app for that. I want to get diet, there's an app for that, right? Remember, it's the same thing in C++. You want to do something, there is a standard template library for that. You want to do sorting, there's a standard template library for it. It not only does it most efficiently, you can tell it to do it multi-threading and whatever. You want to have a stack, there's a template for that. You want to do a graph, there's a template for that. You, anything that you want, there's a template for it. Okay, so we have plenty of them. So, like, you will see that in OP3445, they encourage you not even use loops and use standard template library to repeat things. So they write more efficient loops in templates. So everybody's code becomes efficient. Okay? So... Yeah, we have templates that their job is to repeat. We have a template whose job is to transform an array, which means you pass it in an array, you want to apply something to all the elements of the array, it does it for you. You want to check to see how many are bigger and put in another array, it does it for you. So we have templates for all these things, and that's three, four, five. Okay. Pardon me? <coughs> is that what? Vector is one of them. One of vector is one of many containers, okay? But one of the rules that they always mention, when you want to use an array, use a vector. We'll come to it and you will see what it is. But this is not the time. Now, having said that, we also have a specific type of cast. You all remember what castings were. When we want to temporarily change the type of a variable to something else, to make sure that the type, the most, the most mistakes and bugs in C++ are happening when you are dealing with types and you are not sure. It, it's called type safety. I don't want to go do too much in detail, but the, it's called type safety. If you, it, it means <clears throat> You, can, you should not cast anything to anything. You, you should really think of what type of casting is supposed to be done to, uh, uh, <coughs> is possible to be done or, sh or shouldn't be done. When you cast a pointer to something else, there may be a side effect that is not what you desire. That's why we have several templated casts. Static cast, reinterpret cast, constant cast, and dynamic cast, okay? Static cast is a regular cast that you are doing to, to cast related types together, okay? And if they are not related, it will fail. It will not let you cast, okay? Reinterpret cast is when they are not related and you intentionally want to do something crazy, okay? You do that one. <clears throat> That's reinterpret cast. Constant cast. Believe it or not, if you have a constant variable, constant pointer, you don't want it to be constant. You want to modify it, you can cast the constant this away. Like for example, a display function inside a class should be constant because logically it should not change the owner, correct? But you have a counter in there and you want to see how many times you displayed the function. How can you do that? It's impossible because display is constant, right? You can actually create a member variable, and you can take the constantness only of that variable away using the constant cast. So it takes the constantness away if you want to. So um, yeah, it, it doesn't make sense to take the constantness away from this, because <laughs> then just don't make the function constant. But if you want individual pieces of a class to, to be accessible, you do that. And dynamic cast is when you want to cast between hierarchy. La, go from uh, 
uh, a child to a parent. Like sometimes you want to actually, you have a parent, okay? Parents pointer that is pointing to a child. And you don't have virtuals. You want to cast the parent to a child, okay? That doesn't happen in C. You can't do that. Because it's, it's possible that the parent is not pointing to any child. It's only parent. But if you are 100% sure that this pointer is pointing to a child, you can actually cast a parent to a child using dynamic cast. Okay? The other way, casting a child to a parent, there's no problem. You can do it. Two seconds, right? But the other way, that's the one. But, and if they are not compatible, then it's going to throw an exception and fail. Anyway, so that's so these are ty uh, type of cast. So instead of regular cast that you use, use this format. Look at the examples and see what they are, and use this one. It's the same thing, um, and that's it. So these are templated casts, uh, and that is that. And we are wow, one foot one one twenty five is the end of the class, is it? Whew. Mark, I should go buy a loader ticket. <laughs> Finished. Anybody have any questions? Suggestions? Hmm? <laughs> right now? You don't want to lose it, eh? Yeah. Let me save it. Okay. Test that dynamic array. I did not test it. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe it doesn't work. Try to debug it. I don't know. So I don't know if it actually works or not. I, I just did it. I didn't compile it. And if it has problem, let me know. I'll fix it. So let me just go over here. Commit. Commit and push. It's interesting that when the class begins, we were only like three people in class. So it means it's not that they were late. It was that they just didn't want to come on time. <laughs> Anyways, so done. Uh, stop.